Okay, we're here today with Dr. Ingrid Masson, and we'll be talking today about women's rights and Islam. How are you, doctor? I'm fine. How are you? Alhamdulillah. I'm great uh, to be here with you. Uh, my first question for you will be, how is the advent of Islam uh, raise the status of women? Well, you know, this is a historical question, and um, one of the things that we see is that there's really a, a shift in Islam towards uh, treating women as individuals, not just as part of a tribal society. What does that mean? It means that that uh, a woman's individual rights can't be um, sacrificed for the sake of the group without her consent. Um, a specific instance of this would be in marriage, that before Islam uh, it was possible for a father or a male um, a relative to compel a girl into marriage. Um, in Islam it's required to get the consent uh, uh, of a male or a female before marriage. Um, similarly, she has a right to her own property. She has a right to her own marriage gift. Um, before Islam, it may be possible for her, her male relative to take a gift of money or some other form of wealth, in a way selling his daughter into marriage. But within Islam, any any gift that is given by the by the uh, groom is her wealth, um, and so these are just specific examples. Now it doesn't mean that there still weren't some challenges in that environment. Um, it was still a very limited, um, developed society, tribal society, but the main principles are there to continue to improve uh, the woman's position. One of the brothers in the Dawa group told me that Imam. It is our goal to give every American a copy of the Qur'an. The question is simple. Are we ready to support this noble effort? Share what we've been blessed with? Islam. We invite you to join and support 877Y-Islam. Let's gain the pleasure of Allah by fulfilling our collective obligation to serve His deen.